Hi everybody, I'm Ole and welcome to Botlate Astro. So if you have uh, found this video, you are probably wondering how to do a drift alignment or uh, how to do a polar aligning uh, for your mount when you can't either see Polaris or you are having some kind of obstruction to, to north uh, from the place you are doing your astrophotography. Uh, this is the scenario I have on my balcony or on our balcony here in Oslo. Uh, we are facing uh, pretty much uh, south southwest. Uh, that means that I can't do the polar alignment uh, the normal way while uh, looking at uh, Polaris and aligning your mount that way. Uh, so I'm gonna take uh, take you through a, a guided uh, video on uh, on the drift alignment tool in PhD two. It's a really, really nice tool once you get the hang of it. Uh, it can be a bit uh, intimidating at, at first, but uh, once you once you figure out uh, how to adjust your knobs and uh, and things like that, um, I will uh, guarantee you that you will have uh, a very good uh, polar alignment uh, once you're done. There are some things that you need to be aware of. Uh, this is a, a it's a live uh, view uh, on the stars when you're doing the drift alignment. So there is no mathematical calculations and things like that. It's just how the stars are moving uh, according to your mount and how your mount is set up. Uh, there are other programs that uh, can do this uh, while uh, calculating the offsets of the stars and things like that. So you take different pictures. Uh, but those are mathematically calculated. But anyhow, let's uh, jump on the balcony and uh, see how things are going there. Uh, if you like uh, this kind of videos, please consider uh, subscribing to my channel and leaving a thumbs up. If you have uh, any questions regarding polar alignment or the drift alignment tool or anything else, leave them in the comment sections and I will uh, get back to you pretty soon. So, yeah. It's a bit chilly outside today, some uh, wind gust coming uh, now and then, so I'm not sure how this uh, will go out, but we'll see. So I just opened the uh, Stellarium, I'm gonna find a star uh, facing south, uh, close to the equatorial uh, line. Uh, this will be my starting point uh, for... Um, for the drift alignment uh, in the uh, azimuth uh, axis. So I'm finding Menkar, it's pretty close to both the south and equatorial uh, line. Close the Stellarium and open uh, Nina. Go to the framing component and uh, get coordinates from uh, the planetarium. This will uh, Tell Nina where the star is right now, and uh, Nina will tell the scope where to slew. Okay, so uh, while uh, the framing assistant uh, got uh, got the image of uh, Menkar up in uh, in Nina, I went and uh, got me some coffee. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go in Nina and just uh, slew. Hopefully, this will. Uh, guide my telescope where it should be. I'm going to plate solve and I just uh, adjust the binning to the right thing and just pre press play and see how far off we are. <coughs> once the once the plate solving has been done uh, we're gonna open up uh, PhD2 and uh, see what kind of stars we have uh, have going. And from there we're gonna start uh, the drift alignment. So I just uh, started the drift alignment tool. Uh, I can tell already that uh, the wind is not ideal for uh, for this situation. So I'm gonna see how far off uh, off I am and uh, just see if I will be able to uh, to get uh, somehow close to being aligned right now. I'm gonna let the, let the program go for about a minute or so. There's always a lot of uh, fuss going on the first uh, first steps when it's uh, trying to to settle down and uh, find the um, the, the line uh, of uh, 
which way we are about to adjust our mount. For me, when doing uh, drift alignment, if my telescope is uh, facing the east uh, uh, of the meridian line, I have to uh, loosen my right azimuth knob and tighten the left one to get the line to go downwards, the declination line. Uh, this, can, uh, this can depend on whether your scope is uh, facing east or west, so just uh, try to adjust and see how the graph is adjusting once you press the, the drift uh, again. Here we go. It's the wrong way. Okay, so I just uh, tightened the left side, loosed, uh, loosened uh, the right. I'm gonna wait a bit for uh, scope to to settle, and I'm gonna press uh, drift again and see how it goes. All right, so we finally got our graph. Uh, what I would say is uh, under. Uh, 1.0 uh, RMS error. Uh, it's pretty decent for a for a night like this uh, with winds uh, coming in, so the graph doesn't really stay stable enough. But uh, pretty happy with uh, with the outcome right now, and I hope you guys uh, had some fun uh, learning this. All right, so there you have it. That's how we uh, polar align, or how you do the drift alignment tool, and um, in the azimuth uh, axis. Uh, the the way to go for the altitude is just the same, uh, except that you are uh, finding uh, an uh, area to to find a, a guide star uh, either on uh, facing east or west, uh, about uh, twenty to thirty five degrees above the horizon. Uh, you're gonna watch the declination line, <coughs> the line that's uh, that's uh, indicating uh, how bad your uh, polar alignment is. Uh, and you are uh, adjusting uh, with your uh, altitude knobs instead of your azimuth knobs to, to see how the line is uh, coming. So try to get the lines as uh, level as possible. Uh, everything below one RMS uh, is, uh, is pretty, pretty good and should be enough for uh, doing um, long time exposures uh, while guiding. Uh, this was of course a basic video, there's a lot more things you can do while uh, doing the drift alignment. You have bookmarks to help you uh, adjust the stars and things like that, but uh, we're not going into details on those uh, things. Uh, hope you guys uh, learned something new, maybe you got some tips on how to do it uh, the next time you're outside doing astrophotography. In the meanwhile, uh, take care, hope you have some uh, clear skies and uh, keep looking up.